we didn't rehearse that part. Okay, we're ready to start with the student athletes from Mississippi State. Reminder, as a courtesy to your fellow media members, uh, please silence your cell phone. Uh, please provide, we have handheld mics. Please provide your name, raise your hand, we'll get them to you. Provide your name, media affiliation, and if you could, uh, if you're asking a question of a specific student athlete, address them directly. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, we'll handle all the questions from people in the room first, and raise your hand, and we will reach you for questions, and a reminder that Recording this press conference on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Okay, who's the first question? Second row to our right. Gracie Barra with WCBI. Shaquille, how excited are you to play in your home state? And I mean, how many people do you have coming to this game? I'm really excited. Uh, and I have a bunch of family that's coming, especially on my dad's side. Uh, it's a good opportunity for me and for them to see me. They don't get to see me that much. So I'm excited. Hey, Kelly Blackman with the Niner Times. Um, you know, you guys lost three in a row at the end of the regular season, but you really bounced back in the SEC tournament, defeating um, LSU and Tennessee. How do you plan to continue to move forward and just make a statement for yourselves in this tournament? Tell we'll start with you. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, those losses helped us, motivated us um, going to the SEC tournament. And I think we have the, uh, all the confidence in the world right now going into the NCAA tournament. So we just got to bottle that up and use it uh, for this game and uh, the next games. Josh. Uh, just following back on what Tolu said, just using that same momentum, you know, from the tournament. Um, and uh, knowing the confidence and positivity that we have, you know, through adversity, uh, we know that we can compete with any team. So uh, just uh, following the game plan each game and taking one game at a time. Deshaun? Um, in the beginning of the season, we had a, a common goal that we shared with one another. So we just knew, like, any roadblocks or any hardships that we had that we had to get through it. So those three losses ain't really hurt us mentally. Cameron? Uh, yeah, back like what they said, uh, just, you know, just staying resilient and uh, not getting too high, not getting too low, and just staying in course no matter what. Shaquille. Uh, most definitely. Pick it, pick it back off what Josh said. Just take it one game at a time. Keeping our resilience and confidence, you know, at a, at a high, never too low, and, uh, you know, just handling what we got to handle. Cam, what has your relationship with DJ meant to you, and how excited are you that you get to finish playing with him in the tournament? Uh, it means a lot. Uh, just when looking back at it, uh, just us being kids in high school and how long it's been. Uh, it's been a great journey with my brother, and I'm just excited I get to share a moment like March Madness with him. I guess for any of you, what have you seen from Michigan State on the tape so far, and what's it going to take to beat them tomorrow? We'll start to our right, Shaquille. Um, we know we got to, you know, beat them on the backboards. Uh, you know, that's our, our main thing is, uh, you know, winning the backboard uh, battle and just staying resilient on defense. Cam. Uh, yeah, uh, just doing what we do, defense, rebound, and uh, just trying to maintain their uh, offensive uh, tempo and pace and transition, just trying to slow them down, things like that. Deshaun? Um, they got great players. They got a great system, a great coach, so we know we got to execute our game plan, play physical, play harder than all, in all aspects. Josh, your turn. Uh, just control the pace of the game, you know, the tempo of the game, and uh, defense and rebounding be key to the game, so. What everybody said, um, <laughs> staying within ourselves and doing exactly what these guys just said. So. Josh, just to reach this stage as a freshman, is it surreal to you? What was it like to see the court and how excited are you to participate in the big dance? Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, Definitely a surreal moment, you know, as a little kid, you dream of moments like these. Uh, but, you know, we all deserve this moment. We all put in a lot of work. Uh, Coach Jans deserves it, too. He, he installed a lot of the great things in us. So uh, I'm not surprised that we made it this far because, you know, it's, it's what we deserve. We worked hard for it, and we have a lot of high expectations for us. So. Back of the room. Blake Froling, Spartan Media Network. 
Uh, for Michigan State fans who have never seen Mississippi State play, what would you guys say is the identity of the program this year? Defense, rebounding, and toughness. Oh, good. Good. Defense, rebounding, and toughness. Defense, rebounding, and toughness. Yeah, uh, just um, just being really physical, really getting after it, uh, picking it up on defense, uh, just trying to make defense into offense. Yeah, it's just like they said, it's probably going to be the physical game they played all year. Yeah, just uh, being physical and making the other team uncomfortable, putting them in a bad situation, so. Yeah, what they said, uh, playing, <laughs> playing defense, uh, Playing our game, executing how we execute, and um, just being resilient. So. Other questions? If there are any questions on Zoom, please use the raise hand function. We'll get those as well. Any other questions in the room? OK, guys, thank you. Uh, questions, raise your hand. Let's get the hand held, held mic to you. The first question, middle of the room. Chris, on, on Sunday you mentioned you, know, you guys wouldn't be in this position without, without Guy and, and Jimmy and what they did when Tolu was out. Uh, I guess you can throw Sean Jones into that group too when, when uh, DJ went out in the middle of the year and that was a big part of your, your season. Um, just how important was, was his play during that stretch to, to get you guys out of that early SEC season funk and, and help you guys down the stretch of the year? I think every coach would tell you when they get into recruiting mode, um, certainly you're trying to find the best and the brightest and those that you know, fit your system. And then at the same time, you know, guys that will end up choosing uh, you and your program. And we're no different. You know, we were trying to build that as best we could um, because of the what if scenarios that always seem to come up uh, every season. And uh, like I said, Sunday with, with Jimmy and especially Guy, I mean, he's a true freshman that the plan was to redshirt. Uh, we never had any, any intentions of playing him. We knew that he needed development, but he we played some meaningful minutes in some huge games and got us through some tough spots when Tolu wasn't available. And then Jimmy, you know, the work that he put in and the numbers that he put up, um, I just don't believe that, um, you know, we wouldn't have more losses um, if we didn't have those two guys. And then Sean, like you mentioned, um, you know, I, I, to me it wasn't as big a deal just because, um, you know, we expect him. Uh, going into the season to have a better year, um, to play more minutes, and, and to give us productivity, and he's been able to do that. Second row to our right. Chris, I know you had spoken highly of Isaac when you guys were getting ready for senior day, and you know he's, he was the only one that was you know on this team now that was around last time at Mississippi State won a tournament game. Uh, well, what are kind of your impressions of, of kind of how he's been ingrained in, in Mississippi State and what he's been able to add you know off the court for this team? Yeah, I love having Isaac Stansbury on our team. Um, what I love the most about him is when he gets in that game, he plays the right way. And, and he would never say anything to anybody else, but if he's out there and someone isn't playing the right way, uh, it disappoints him. He practices at such a high level. Uh, he, he works at his craft outside of practice, even knowing you know he's not going to be in the guts of the game when the score is in balance and i think it says a lot about who he is and what his makeup is and uh, if he had any more eligibility i would be begging him to to come back and, and be a part of our program because uh he brings positivity to it stay second row hey chris ben portnoy sports business journal uh you, you've been a part of this tournament at a bunch of different places but there's a lot of discussion about changes to the tournament format expansion things like that I guess, where do you kind of fall in, and see the future of this tournament? Do you think it's something that should be looked at, discussed? I mean, where do you kind of fall on that, that front? Yeah, I'll be honest. Um, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that just because at the end of the day, no one's going to care what I got to say. No one really cares what Chris Jans' opinion about expansion of the NCAA tournament. So why would I waste any of my brain power, the little that I have, of trying to come up with uh, an answer or a point of view? Chris, this is a Michigan State team that was ranked top five in the preseason AP poll, but obviously fell short of that. Is it pretty easy to overlook those shortcomings as you get ready to face them when this is a Tom Izzo coached team? Yeah, we won't be overlooking anything that they do. They were ranked in the preseason that high for a reason. And at the end of the day, it's how they're playing now. You know, Tom Izzo is as respected of a basketball coach that there is in college basketball. Uh, when I was growing up in the business, when I was young, uh, younger, um, 
people would ask me, you know, who, who's your idol, who's your mentor? And I said, you know, I really don't have one. I didn't grow up in an athletic family. None of my parents um, played high school or college sports. So I was oblivious to really the profession and, and even college basketball for that matter. I mean, heck, I just, I just wanted to be a high school basketball coach and, and, a, and a PE teacher. I thought they had the best life you could ever imagine. And uh, eventually, you know, I, I, I strive for a little bit more, but um, people would ask me that all the time. And, and to be honest with you, my answer was, you know, if I had to emulate someone or some program, and I'm talking about my early 20s, I go, it would be Tom Izzo and Michigan State. I always respected the way he went about his business, uh, the way his teams played. Uh, I wanted my teams to be looked at it that way, and I know they're not. Um, but, but in an early age, uh, in my formative years as a college coach, uh, that was probably the person in the program um, that I looked up to the most. And then I chuckled when we got paired up with him because I'm sure he had to look down his staff and say, hey, who is Christians and who are we playing against? Because I'm sure he had to ask a couple people to get some information about me. So uh, it's a privilege to be able to get a chance to share the floor with him and to compete against him. Second row. Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. Chris, curious what uh, what attracted you initially to uh, to Deshaun, and uh, and and can you describe what he has meant to this program since he got here? Yeah, he was uh, one of our uh, first guys uh, we targeted, uh, and you know we got on him obviously in the portal, and we knew him from his junior college days. You know, our staff had uh, been familiar with him. Um, when he was a junior college player, obviously he didn't uh, end up choosing us when we were at New Mexico State. Um, but then he had a great year uh, at Oregon State his first year. He led the Pac-12 in assist. Uh, his shooting numbers weren't as good as, as we thought they could be, um, you know, for us. And um, we just, you know, obviously developed relations with him like everybody does in recruiting. But I think our familiarity with him, uh, we had some relationships already in place. Uh, we had recruited him, you know, before. Um, but, you know, we certainly were glad when he chose us. Yeah, I'm on record saying this a number of times. Um, we're at our best when he is revving the engine defensively for us. Uh, he is a disruptive defender. He's big, strong. Uh, he's got a competitive streak in him. And when he gets out there and bothers uh, the ball handler and gets them out of their comfort zone, uh, it, it helps our team because they see it visually. And I think it motivates them uh, as well. And then when he does that, he plays his best offense. And when he's engaged and he's thinking aggressive and he's getting downhill and he's getting the ball in the paint for himself, for others. Um, so he's brought a ton um, of that to the table. And the best thing about him for us is he's probably playing his best basketball here down the stretch. To a right on the aisle. Aaron Beard with the AP. Chris, when, when, you, when you guys are playing your best defensively, what are the things that stand out to you about maybe whether it's connectedness, the intensity, the things you're looking for in those kind of moments from your group? Yeah, well, it starts in trying to get five guys back. Uh, in transition, which will be obviously very difficult against the Michigan State team. And if we can get five on five, we like our chances a lot more to have a productive possession. Um, but in the end, like when we break down the video, uh, it always goes back to, you know, guarding the basketball. I mean, if, if you can't guard the basketball uh, by yourself at a point of attack um, situation or with a teammate in a ball screen situation, then you're probably going to struggle uh, on those nights. And so, uh, you, know, it, you know, people will talk about, oh, the guy was late to the shooter or, um, you know, he didn't get around the post or whatever the case may be. But if you track it backwards, to me, it usually goes back to someone didn't guard the ball very well and, and they got an angle or they get, the ball got to the paint or whatever the case may be. So we spent a lot of time, you know, talking about that and trying to uh, physically improve on that throughout the year. And um, certainly, you know, having your, your motors going and, and your engine revved and, and getting all that intensity in the game helps as well. To our left aisle. Yeah, Coach, got Kevin Sweeney. Curious, um, you know, Josh, I think, is averaging 25 points a game in his last eight. Um, that's, you know, you hear about freshman walls. Obviously, he's kind of powering through that. What, what's allowed him to be so successful this year? And did you foresee him being able to make this level of impact as, as a freshman when you recruited him? Uh, no. 
Um, I didn't foresee him having that kind of impact as a true freshman. I'm glad I was wrong. Uh, I'm on record saying that I don't think anybody uh, said that on record. And uh, if they're thinking it and saying it now, I, I would question uh, if they're telling the truth or not. Now, the people that did believe that he would were Josh Hubbard uh, and his uh, family. Uh, they know the work that he's put in. And now having to get to know him even better after working with him uh, this past year, I understand why. Uh, his confidence, his belief uh, stems from uh, his work. Uh, he's uh, a dogged worker. He's a disciplined worker. Uh, he, he works at his craft. He loves the game. Uh, it means so much to him. And he does it outside of the gym, too. He's taking care of himself at a young age in terms of what he's putting in his body and his sleep and his approach. He hasn't had a bad day since he's been here. You know, he shot the ball, you know, good on some days, bad on others. But in terms of his mental approach, uh, walking in the door every day, he's steady Eddie. Uh, he's productive. He's coachable. Um, you know, that's the thing that sticks out the most to me is, is he's as coachable as anyone I've ever coached. And he's got the it factor. You know, and if you talk to other coaches, you know, that, what that means, it means a lot. He just gets it. And uh, I'm sure glad he's on our team. Middle Chris, of the room. Chris, Shaq Moore grew up about an hour from here. Uh, had you know, rough up, up, upbringing in some, some years, and obviously a transfer from NC State. What have you just learned about you know, his time growing up right here and, and, and sort of getting, getting to this point with, with you guys at, at Mississippi State? Yeah, every time we play over this way, uh, you know, there's always some, some Shaq Moore uh, family in the stands, and it's nice to see them supporting Shaq and getting to interact with them, you know, following the game. And that's one of the first things that I said uh, once we were uh, selected and then knew we were coming to Charlotte is that, hey, man, we we're going home. And certainly his, you know, smile lit up with a big, beautiful smile. And I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he gets another opportunity to play in March Madness. and. Then he gets to do it in front of a bunch of his family and friends. To our right. Chris, you were talking about the respect you had for, for Tom Izzo earlier, I guess. Why do you think he's been able to have the longevity that he's had and, and you know, stay in his you know, successful role um, even as the game has changed throughout the years? I mean, gosh, I, I'm, I, I don't really know, to be honest with you, other than I would imagine, um, first and foremost, he's a hell of a basketball coach. You know, I think it starts with there. I mean, you don't go to what's it, 25, 26, 27, consecutive, consecutive, mind you, um, NCAA tournaments uh, in a row. I just, I just can't imagine what, what that would feel like uh, having to do that. I mean, that, that's a lot. You talk about consistency. You're talking about um, you know, believing in, in your system, uh, the recruiting aspect of it, um, you know, to continue to do it at that level. I don't care what the front of your jersey says. Um, that's a difficult task, and I think all of college basketball admires him for being able to, to do that. But um, I'm sure what I just said, the words I just used, probably had a lot to do with, you know, why he's been able to do that at Michigan State. You know, being a great coach, you know, uh, having a consistent approach, having a belief in, in their system, uh, hiring, you know, really good coaches around him. Um, but there's a lot to it, and um, you know that that's quite the accomplishment. You know, and he's done, he's won, he's done it all. You know, all the Final Fours, the national championships, um, Hall of Fame coach. Um, whenever he decides, you know, he's had enough, uh, he'll be revered as as good a coach as there ever was. Last question, back of the room. Blake Froling, Spartan Media Network. As you look at the tape with the Spartans, is there an area you see as the biggest matchup problem for you guys, and then an area that you think you really can exploit? The first thing that jumps off the page to me is just how quickly they get the ball up the court. Um, certainly, everybody runs on turnovers, uh, and most people push it on misses. But when that ball goes through the net, I'm not so certain that they're not better that way than they even are in missed shots. Um, I mean, they get the ball out of that net, and they know where they're outletting the ball. And those guys run the wings, and they rim run, and they give that passer options. And if you're not on your P's and Q's, and you celebrate it all on a made shot, or you don't think get back or sprint back, and whatever your assignment is defensively, it's over. They're laying the ball in, or they're hoisting up a wide open three. And um, that, 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 that's what jumps out at me the most. I, I don't spend a lot of time watching other teams during the season, so I wasn't familiar with that. When I think of Michigan State, it's more 
more the toughness, the rebounding, you know, um, Tom Izzo. Um, but that's what surprised me um, the most. And, you know, it's easy to say in terms of, yeah, let's get back and guard them. But, but it's hard to do when, you know, uh, they do it at such breakneck um, speed. In terms of, you know, anything that we can exploit, um, I mean, they're just so well-rounded. I know I'm sure the local people, you know, have been riding them this and that because they lost a game or, here, game or two here or there. But look at their schedule. I mean, their, their non-league schedule was off the chart. Um, you know, who knows if he knew James Madison and Indiana State and folks like that were going to be as good as they were. So uh, when they made that schedule, maybe they thought that was going to be, a, you know, more of a relaxing game. But um, it's just scattered and littered with um, great programs up and down their schedule. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you.